Thursday, September the 15th. And once again, I'm down in uh, Suffolk, about to undertake a Finn Valley walk, which uh, officially starts at Westerfield to, the, to Woodbridge here. But I'm doing it in reverse for logistical reasons. And um, it's around 10 miles. So I definitely need to be back at Westerfield for around quarter to six for the return train. Appropriately, on this sombre day, sombre week, we've got a grey day, quote Larry Grayson. Sun does poke out from time to time. It's around 16, 17 degrees. About average for this time of year, with uh, no breeze at all, which is good. It's around 12.30 now, just gone. So uh, let's get cracking, because as I say, up against the clock a bit today. But uh, at the outset here, let's dedicate this one to Her Majesty, eh? If it wasn't for her unfortunate death, I wouldn't be here today because there was a rail strike planned, uh, but that was called off so mourners could get into London so um, I'm grateful, yet again, for that. Rest in peace. Seems like a very pleasant station this. Teas and coffees just outside as well. View over the harbour from the footbridge. Very pleasant again. information panel here about Woodbridge ancient market town over a thousand years of history views back towards the station with those ominous black clouds above us there wonderful views across the harbour and as you can see, I've timed this today, hopefully, so that the tide is out and I can do the full extent of this walk rather than doing the alternative inland version. Bit of uh, sculpture here, by all accounts. Freeze that if you want to read more or Google it remnants of times gone by here as we are now entering a working boatyard by all accounts there are public conveniences over there on my right just for the record so as you can see we're at the uh, or on the river Deben here information panel railway line just over there on my right and uh, as this is a river valley walk pretty much today I am expecting encounters with the friendly cattle and speak of the devils as the breeze starts to pick up a bit might come across on com commentary as I get more exposed towards the uh, more open expanse. Final view back towards a rather black looking wood bridge. There are plenty of riverside seats if you're doing this walk in the correct direction and fancy in an end of walk cup of tea picnic looking down the Deben towards the uh, sea I guess even the birds are quiet today appropriately Plenty of people around here, mind. 
So as you can see we're following a number of walks here. The Sandlins walk, which I've walked previously to uh, Southwold. Can't read that one. There's the first of the Suffolk line symbols. And there's a Finn Valley one. Surface thus far has been tarmac, but that changes very shortly as we approach Kyson Point, I believe. Now this is a viewpoint, Kyson Hill, which I believe is worth ascending, but I'll check the GPS uh, to see if that's um, on my route. Certainly mentioned in Country Walking Magazine's version of this route which I've um, acquired the GPX track for. So they mimic the Finn walk um, handily because the East Suffolk Lines version doesn't have a GPX track. Yeah, that Kyson Hill version is the uh, escape route if the tide is high and you can't walk up Marlsham Creek or via Kyson Point which is straight on here and the way I'm currently headed. And ahead of me now, as you can see, is why you can't do this section when there's a high tide. And looking at the tide at the moment, it is still going out. So, uh, very lucky today. High tide is half four or thereabouts here. So I read. Onward path here is clear. And the breeze is picking up. So that uh, is a bit ominous with that black cloud around. No rain was forecast today. Let's keep uh, fingers crossed. So you can see here, the path does get flooded. Despite the vegetation there to keep the tide back. So I've just passed Kyson Point. And I'm now walking up Martlesham Creek, which I know from memory as I've been there before. A friend of mine used to live there. It's a wonderful section of walk. You can hear the uh, waders over there. Lots of those small oaks either side of the path here that I saw on the path uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was down on the Deben as well. Charles Mondeston walk. Good to see lots of new willows being planted over there. I presume by the National Trust. Can't be certain. But uh, it would be in keeping with them doing so. Obviously the Queen was their patron I believe. I guess Charles takes that on now, I don't know. And this section again evidences uh, Suffolk County Council's very good footpath maintenance. Nice stony path here, well maintained. Group of swans over there. Don't know what variety, mind. There goes one of the uh, Anglian trains. All modern, nicely equipped trains they are. Certainly better than our lot. Good use of solar technology here to operate something at Martlesham Sluices. Little egret over there. As it looks like we're about to enter woodland. Wonderful variety. 
a crucial finger post is down here which I would have reported on Pathwatch had it been around so uh, we go through that little hole in the fence there turn right on the edge of the wood wonderful section of ancient woodland this birch, holly hornbeam wonderful footpath maintenance isn't so great here possibly recent falls I don't know give them the benefit good to see water back in the ditches again and it's quite amazing how stuff has gone green again after that very dry period the grass is unbelievable almost back to normal green in just a few weeks funguses are popping up or fungi are popping up so uh, everything's back on track for autumn it seems opposite a house by the name of Duveen do a right bit of road walking now opposite the red lion to a right here towards Woodbridge again passing Martlesham Antiques on my right so after a, about half a mile of urban walking there and just ahead of this roundabout which uh, leads to the busy A12 I believe we do a left here next to uh, a former nursery so at the moment I'm wedged in between the rail line on my left and the A12 on my right which uh, is ahead of me and we need to get under or over somehow So right up next to the A12 now and there's our answer, an agricultural tunnel, wonderful. Immediately coming out of the tunnel, take a left, not straight on, come out into open countryside here and there is a river on my left which I'm assuming is the Finn I will check that indeed it was as we move away from the din of the A12 and the River Finn slightly brightening up a bit now thankfully now coming out into more agricultural country as I approach the uh, Hamlet or village of Little Beelings, which is where I plan to locate their church and have lunch. Two o'clock presently. Walking over these fields, and I notice lots of potatoes either ploughed in, or perhaps they're the seeds, I don't know. But uh, I think I read this year somewhere that the potato crop wasn't great, which is partly why fish and chips have gone up in price. Not only jet down to the oil. Big potato field here. Looks like that was a former pub there. In the village of Little Beelings. And here we are at the Church of All Saints. Book of Condolence. Information here about the walls of the church. Interesting. Nice and simple. Ancient this place, I bet. Google that one. 
All Saints little Beelins if you're interested. This is where lunch is going to be for me. Looks like the decorators are in it at the moment. Not much in the way of seats though. So I'll take this other one, which is in memory of Muriel Garu. So uh, around 25 past two, four and a half mile in. So around halfway and lunch is served. Okay, three o'clock, lunch has been had. Time to press on. Now leaving little Beelins. I.e. it's not a bridal way. No mention of bicycles though. Now getting into more agricultural lands. Views just on the outskirts of Little Beelins again. Surface underfoot is still quite sandy, hence the Sandlins walk. Now entering the small village or hamlet of Playford, which also has a church, but I don't think it's on the route. There is another possible lunchtime respite here in Playford, but it's next to a quite busy road. Seat there in memory of the uh, Jubilee in 77. And of course all these post boxes still bear ER and I guess they will, like all their predecessors still bear GR or VR even. But of course there are more ER boxes than the other two combined I'd imagine. Grey heron there has just flown up out the ditch. And in the distance there, there's some cattle. And I'm walking alongside a very large field in which they are in. But what the farmer has very kindly done, probably on the advice of Suffolk County Council, judging from their previous good work, is put up an electric fence, which I've advocated on so many occasions on my walks. Saves a lot of aggravation for walkers and cattle. I mean, the farmer here has given over a metre or so of his field, which is a footpath anyway, and uh, is protecting us from said beasts with a bit of an electric fence. Wonderful. And they are some big beasts which need respecting when you see the way they toss lions about not so much cattle but their uh, wild buffalo cousins toss a full-grown male lion up in the air as though it's a toy these domestic cattle if they uh, don't like the look of you are equally dangerous particularly in numbers you know, the old herd mentality, they'll trample you. So that's why I keep going on about them. I know like dogs, they also can smell fear probably, but it's not so much fear as respect. Particularly as I'm uh, usually on my own doing these walks. Quite a boggy section here, as you can see. 
It's now a very pleasant, sunny, early autumn afternoon with a bit of a cooling breeze to go with it. Wonderful. Stood right on top of the fin here on an old wooden uh, brick bridge. Onward journeys through that kissing gate ahead. The Country Walking magazine uh, notes mention two styles on this walk. Haven't encountered them yet. Maybe they've been replaced with kissing gates. Let's see. Six and a half mile into the walk now. Plenty of space there as well. Ideally thought out. Wonderful. As I say, most things that uh, I've encountered with Suffolk County Council have been good. Passing the fountain in Tuddenham St Martin. It. Busy road that I'm stood next to as well. Bit of history here. Hopefully you can read that. If not, Google it. So as you can see, uh, the bridle way goes off left here, oh, sorry right as uh, you're coming from the pub but the country walking magazine GPX continues straight on through the village so I'm just going to check this out because the East Suffolk Lines version and bearing in mind I need to get back to a railway station goes right as well so there you can get to Westerfield via this um, East Suffolk Lines symbol. So I'm just going to check the old map, see what's what. Yeah, I'm going to stick with a country walking variation because to go this way, uh, following the uh, East Suffolk Rail Lines circular version, is considerably longer. I didn't bother going to see the church at East Tudnam. But there she blows. Passing the village hall on my left as I ascend. So just passing Poplar Farm on the map. And we're now continuing on across fields. Just passing an interesting trig point here, uh, which is 54 metres per the map. Now obviously I work in pounds, shillings and pence, so I've just checked a new altimeter app that I've put on my phone, and remarkably it says 175 foot, which at 54 metres is not bad, is it? Because we know this is 54 metres per the map and the altimeter is giving us 175 foot so pretty accurate yeah I'm impressed with that because the uh, new pedometer kind of uh, tracking device I use now it doesn't have heights on it like the old one used to I gave up with uh, what was it called sport tractive I used to use kept stopping so now I'm back to map my hike as the uh, recording device for my performance so this is the view from the seat probably the high point of today's walk On the fringes now of Westerfield. A 
And as today's death, which just looks like it's simply dropped out of the sky, not attacked in any way, shape or form from what I can see. Could just be old age and have had a heart attack, stroke, who knows what birds get. God rest your soul. Right, potential to be uh, a problem here. All the fields in this section are surrounded by fencing, indicating there's likely to be development going on here and they're not too distant. So Country Walking Magazine, you need to uh, recheck this walk. Because I think the ending may not be possible. And the road is certainly too busy. Here are the two styles as we cross over the rail line. Well there you go. Part of footpath 18 temporarily closed. Well I've just managed to use it. That's dated the 30th of July 2022. It's a country walking magazine. The section over the railway line is closed. They're expecting you to walk on the road by the looks of it. Walk needs adjusting. So I then come out onto a busy fee road, which luckily has a footpath on it, to walk back to the station. Passing the railway in, which is right next to the station, obviously. Also accommodation here. 45 minute wait now for my train, so uh, it is tempting. Right, here I am. 10.45 miles, or 10 miles and three quarters later, back at Westerfield. Three hours 36, and incredibly, I wouldn't Adam and Eve it, my train has been cancelled. Incredible, it really is. The legacy of problems I have with the train service. Overhead wires, apparently. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of this walk, there's hardly a breeze. So how have those overhead wires got affected? Some excuse, I reckon. Shortage of staff. Staff on the uh, main line get all the crowds out of London, I do not know. But now I am lumbered. It's 45, or would have been 45 minutes to wait for the train anyway. And they're hourly. No buses. So I have to think of uh, forking out as much on a taxi as it cost me to get here from Hitchin. Shocking. Anyway, that aside, the walk was fine, very nice. Weather held out in the end, and uh, another Suffolk, stupendous Suffolk walk. Highly recommended, but there are some issues at the end of it now, which do need uh, checking. Because I don't think you've had to complete it in the manner I have. Looks like there's going to be a whacking great big housing estate built here. Anyway, till the next time, whenever that may be. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing a walk next week because, um, and actually I've just noticed there's no overhead lines here anyway. So what's it, what's going on? Yeah, I'm likely to do a walk next week on Thursday for sure because I've got to put my car in, but uh, might get one done on Friday. Let's see. That's if I get back from this one. <laughs>